Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the What the Football channel. This is uh, the BH and Scrubber show. We like the Commanders for obvious reasons. Uh, this is going to be a, a little bit of a recap of the Cardinals game, but looking forward mostly to the Broncos game. And speaking of the Broncos game coming this Sunday, uh, September 17th, I believe it's at uh, 4.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, whatever that is in, in your time zone. I will be doing the um, live reaction show. I get to watch the, the game and I will be giving a play by play as we go painting uh, the game picture in your mind. For those of you who don't get to watch it, uh, come watch us. Come watch me, come check in with us, and we are going to call the game, get people in the chat room. BH is going to be in the chat room. We always have a good time. I always scream and yell and cheer and cry and laugh, and just like your buddy who sits on the couch. So uh, get your uh, adult beverages ready and, and come hang out with us on Sunday. Also, BH, my boy, is here today. Good to see you, BH. Yeah, good to be here, man. Uh, that was a hell of a game. Uh, man, I was thinking about all the things we talked about, you know, like, like what we didn't want to see. And I think we saw everything we didn't want to see. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and we still won. We so, did. <laughs> God dang it, man. Yeah. Uh, so it was a little bit of frustration. I got to go back and uh, I watched, I got the NFL plus. So I went ahead and watched that compressed condensed game um, and just, you know, then focused in and watched <clears throat> You know, but kudos to the team for winning. You know, it did look kind of bad. Um, I will say one thing. Um, it was sloppy. It's a lot sloppier than you think. I was kind of watching the rain, and as it was coming down, it, it didn't look that bad when you're, you know, when you're watching, and they didn't really talk too much about it. But that was a decent amount of rain. It we was. know what that does to, to, to offenses. You know, they can't be in. Both teams weren't really killing it on offense either. Mm -hmm. um, they had their fumbles. We had ours. Um, but you know, for first game, it was good. Um, Hey, we didn't lose 40 to nothing at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, who was that? Oh yeah. The, the giants. giants, the G -Man. 40 dude. If could you imagine Ow. the commanders losing 40 to nothing at home at that home opener, they'd have burnt the city down, bro. Yep. I mean, it, it, they were so geeked up for that game. A loss would have been bad. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I think that's um, one thing, just looking back, I know people, there was, you know, people were happy, but there's a lot that people weren't happy about. But um, those first games are um, kind of weird. You don't know. Um, I think sometimes there's a lack of preparation and cohesiveness coming up. A lot of players have two-week breaks. A lot of people are, you know, they're, they want – injured players to rest for the big game. We saw the Giants look, I don't know what, uh, I don't know. It was like they thought it was the fourth preseason game, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Someone forgot to tell them there's only three. Uh, um, they, look, look at Cincinnati. I was actually able to go back and forth and watch the Cincinnati game. They were awful. They, mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't believe it was Cincinnati. Um, right. A lot of other teams, I mean, Seattle at home, they just, they crapped the bed. Pittsburgh they Steelers. Did, Oh, awful. And I saw the Pittsburgh. I watched the Pittsburgh game. Yep. Same thing. Just looked like they showed up and weren't ready or prepared. Can't say that about the commanders. They were ready. There were some glitches along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but, and so, and I think they did really good. Um, in a way, there's a lot of pressure. You got a quarterback. Um, he's playing only his second pro game ever. There's a big buildup with the new ownership. The game sold out early. I mean, there, there, there was some, there was some pressure there. You know, let, let's be honest. There really was uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of excitement. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, they were down and they came back and won. And, and to me, that's the most important thing. You know, they didn't, you know, they didn't just go, uh, and then all of a sudden let it get away, <clears throat> you know, and then lose 28 to, to 20 or whatever. They, they, they did really good. So mm -hmm. um, what did you think? Uh, I agree with a lot of what you said. It, it was a relief to see some of these other teams shit to bed. That was awesome. So uh, some of the things that we talk about on our channel that make a huge difference, you know, I'm not a big stat number. Who cares how many passes you throw, how many, whatever you do, whatever those stats are, if your receivers drop four or five passes, you know, Gibby fumbles inside the red zone, uh, eight penalties, 
You know, those are you know, in and of themselves are not bad, but those are momentum stoppers that fumble inside the red zone. Man, that's just a it's just an attitude killer. You know what I'm saying? Them in and of itself. OK, it's a fumble, but still you gained all this momentum. You got down there. You fumbled the ball. Uh, yeah. Missed catches that were supposed to be that would have got to the first down and would have continued. Uh, John Bates had a holding call. Actually, he had two calls against him. Uh, one was a pass interference, which was total bullshit, but that was on a yeah. first down. I mean, he barely right. bumped the guy. The other guy bumped him, actually, it looked like. But then he had the holding penalty when, you know, it's like third, and I forget what it was, five or so, and, and B-Rob got the first down, and he's holding. Well, now it went from a first down to a third and 15. It's just a, it's just a momentum killer. And so I thought that's what really hurt us the most. So as we always say on this channel, clean up those things a little bit, you know, the fumbles instead of three, let's only have one instead of five drop passes. Let's only have two, you know what I mean? And the game yeah. becomes a whole different game. And, uh, you know, the fumbles to the fumbles led to uh, 10 points by the Cardinals. So without those two turnovers, we would have won 20 to six. You know, if yep. uh, uh, Gibby hadn't have fumbled, that would have been a touchdown. Now you're talking about 27 to six. So the, it's a whole different game. And then the whole mindset where you get to breathe a little bit instead of having catch a ball, catch a ball, catch a ball like we're used to. And it's a funny thing. I'll say this now too. people. Oh, new coordinator, new owner, new all this stuff. They look like the same team to me. Yep. I mean, I kept... they struggled on the offense, had a great defense, shot themselves in the foot constantly, barely won the game, and that kind of stuff. I saw no change whatsoever in our team. Now there's 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 room to grow, but I didn't really yep. see a lot of change there. So, Nope. And I have to tell you, <clears throat> it, all the things we talked about, no stupid penalties when we got them, turnovers, crazy. I mean, the fumble for a touchdown. What a dagger. I ah. mean, it's one thing. You know, if, if you just fumble and they fall on it and you can hold them to a field goal, but that 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 just – that's a killer. That's a freebie. As a matter of fact, I don't think their offense scored a touchdown, right? No. I mean, they no, got, that was they their only, only touchdown. Goals. Right. Yeah. So there's that. And, and yeah, I kept looking for Norv uh, Turner Jr. up in the box. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Come on. <laughs> and so, yeah, they yeah. played it close to the vest a little more than I think they should have. Um, but I will, I guess in, in a couple ways, I'll give, I'll give them, uh, it'll be enemy too. I mean, let's face it. You, you got to implement a new offense. You can't come in with a 375 page book and say, okay, guys, this is my goal for you. And you know, it just doesn't work. You've got to implement and you got to get guys going a little bit slower. And also it was, it was slick. It was wet. And I think at the mm -hmm. end there, they really went run heavy. Although there were a lot more, there was a lot more passing than I thought. I mean, Really, there was a little bit more than I thought. So, um, well, I felt like yeah, in the it, first half they probably were doing more passing because they knew the rain was coming. Maybe try and get ahead in the game, and then in the second half, once you're ahead, then all you got to do is run the rock all day. So I would assume that's a great that's, point. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great point. And then it backfired because of the interceptions and the fumbles. Yeah, you know, it, it kind of backfired on them. So, yeah. yeah, I felt the same way. I thought it was sort of was seeing the same. Same old thing. So we got to hope for some growth because that was one of my things. I want to see some on offense. I want to see more attitude. I want to see more dynamics. I want to see some new plays. I want to see a new. And I just don't felt didn't feel like I saw that. Yeah. Um, the drop passes were something else. I know Logan Thomas had a wide open one, and he had two taken away from him. Um, but still, I'll, I'll give him one of those because, you know, the defender did get their hand in there. But you know what? It's 50-50. If the, even if the defender gets his hand on there, you have just as much of a chance to catch that ball. And so I think Logan's got to do a little more concentration. If you're battling, make sure you snag that ball. Don't let that guy. You're, Be aggressive. You're 200, yeah, you're 255 and the, and the defender's 195. So you're a big guy. Mm -hmm. You should be able to get it. But total three passes just from him. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was kind of cool is um, Howell did target him quite a bit. So that's really cool. We got having a tight end in the game and having him have confidence is going to help him a lot because as we get to drier, better conditions and he can air the ball out mm -hmm. or if they're mm -hmm. calling deeper plays and it doesn't work, 
He always knows. He's already got a connection with his tight end. Boom, boom. And and being a veteran, Logan knows how, especially on a, on a, if there's if they're calling a deep play, he knows where to go in the zone and how to move around to give Hal a chance to get to him if things break down on the back end, if Hal has to find someone intermediate. So, yeah, I did like that, and he didn't give up on him despite the drop. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and what do you think of that defense? Oh, you heard me call it in the game. I did, They were just doing phenomenal. Deron Payne, he was a beast. Of course, I even called it in the game. I said uh, about midway through the third quarter, Montez Sweat, MVP. So I said it during yep. the game. He was killing it. Cam Curl did such a great job. Uh, all the boys, uh, Forbes did a great job. Actually, we, we almost had three interceptions. So yeah, uh, Forbes almost had one there at the end. Curl almost had one there. <sighs> And then yeah. uh, uh, someone else almost had one too. So, but anyways, uh, oh, uh, Percy Butler almost had one. Percy Butler, he dropped one. And let me just yeah. say something about that. That's like those passes to Logan, where you had, where you're battling. You got to catch some of those, even though the defender's mm-hmm. got his hands. In. And the same with interceptions. Because I tell you, man, I can tell you how many times you got to convert those interceptions. Yep, you really do, especially those first two. Yeah, uh, they were right there, and that's a game changer. It's good that you deflected it, and it you it hit it got knocked away and wasn't completed. Mm. But that's a finishing thing. Is yeah. is you intercept? That's a we know how it feels when we throw an interception. Well, it feels the same way to the other team. Mm. It's a gut wrencher when you do right. that. And so and yeah, and then uh, at the end, I know <laughs> I, I was really hoping that uh, that Forbes could get that interception, but he just trailed this guy so well. He just didn't turn around. By the time he he was shattering the guy perfectly, he just turned and the ball hit him. It was sort of like at the last minute. But his coverage was really so good because he mirrored him down the field so well. It was awesome. So, yeah, yeah. They, they really stood out. Did you see the Jonathan Allen forearm? And oh, God, knocked. I called it during the game. Yeah, yeah. that was oh awesome. God. They were like, like grabbing a wrestling him and, maneuver. Yeah, well, they were grabbing him and holding him. You know, no flag, of course. And he just said, okay, well, here, boom. And just knocked him back. That I'm glad he didn't hit awesome. him in the helmet. That was a that was the play of the day for me. So uh, yeah, the D. I think we're um, I think we're going to be I think we're going to be okay with this defense. Um, the younger guys are growing into it. I think the DBs actually. There was a couple of times when they let Trey McBride, their young tight end, get out there on him. I don't know what the hell that two plays in a row he was wide open, oh and then there gosh. was nothing else. But other than that, they seem to really be on top of their guys. They were kind of weird in the um, screen game. They got burned on some screens, but the Cardinals threw a lot of screens. They did. Matter of fact, I like I like their screen game better than ours. So I yep. kind of hope I hope yep. we could have a screen game like yep. that. But also, they blew up three or four screens. I mean, they just destroyed some of those screens. So it was sort of feast or famine, you know, like tighten that up a little bit. But it was good to see that they smelled out a lot of those plays. They did. Um, and they, they got smarter as the game went on. They just figured them out. That's why I, I got it written down here, a tale of uh, a tale of two halves. You know, the, the defense just learned everything they were doing and then just shut them down. You know, you can yep. only get away with that shit for so long. That, that They were a one-trick pony. That's all they had. And yeah. uh, they got blown up in that second half of everything that they were trying to do. So, yeah. And just stuff. four man rush too. Yeah. Yeah. So good stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was good. It's good to get that victory, but now. Yeah. Going to Denver. So mile high. Mile high. I watched some of the, the game. They lost to the Raiders at home. So they're going to be a little, uh, I think they'll have a, they will be a little bit, a uh, little bit of the red ass. You know, you don't want to go lose your first two games at home. So I, I would think they'd be ready, <laughs> prepared. I mean, come on. But yeah. yeah, they and they were okay. I think the one thing I let they did really well was their run stopping. Mm-hmm. Their D line, their front seven did a great job on Josh Jacobs. I mean, they really did. So that that'll be interesting because we're gonna, you know, we like to run. So that's gonna be a war. Um, on the other flip, on the other side of it, their um, their DBs. They got a great great DB and Patrick Sertan, but the rest, oh, they were just given, I mean, they, they had one, I can't forget the guy's name, but all the other guys, he was picked on them and they stayed oh, yeah. away from Sertan. Uh, Damari Mathis. He's their other corner. Yeah. yeah, he was, it was sad, man. They were working those guys. So um, I think um, we're going to have a good chance with all of our Logan and our three receivers. I think 
are going to do really great. I think we'll still go after Sertan. We have great route running receivers. They're not afraid of him. Terry's not afraid of him. Jahan's not afraid of him. Um, he's good, no doubt about it, but they're not going to, I don't think they're just going to stay away from him the whole time. They do move him around a little. Mostly they'll keep him on Terry's side. He, he does play over there a lot, but not exclusively. So we'll see him, but you know, we can, we can move our guys into position to take care of their weak weaknesses. So um, I like that, but that was the one thing about them. They were pretty good against the run and mm-hmm. we, we, we will challenge them on the run. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they got also their safety. Um, Camden Stearns is hurt. He got hurt in like the first quarter of the game. Boom, out. So they got that Kareem Jackson guy in there now. And I mean, he, he, he has been their safety for quite some time. Camden came up and, uh, and got the job from him. So, uh, yeah, that Kareem Jackson guy I just wanted to go back to, uh, uh, he's the one who, uh, hit Jacoby Myers with the helmet. And they also, the one on Jimmy Garoppolo was not really a thing. Garoppolo was flopping, but going back to the Cardinals against us, you know, that helmet to our boy. And then a couple plays later, they did the same thing on the other side of the field to our, uh, to John our receiver. Right. Yeah. And so I, I looked at, who, who's the number one penalized cheating team all last year? The Cardinals. And their, uh, their win-loss reflects it. They were like 5 and 13 yeah. or 5 and whatever, 12. And then who was number two in cheaters penalties last year? The Broncos. No. Yeah, I know. So we're playing the oh one God. and two cheater teams right up front. And so they, you know, we got to watch out. That brings me to this. We got to watch out because they're, like you said, they got to win. And so it looks to me like they're willing, might be willing to do just a little bit more to secure that win. And so we got to be careful out there. Yeah, that Kareem Jackson hit. Surprised he didn't get tossed for that. Um, that was pretty bad. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, it's, and hitting a quarterback in the head's bad because even if the quarterback comes into the game, you're wondering, hey, where, how, how, where's his head at? You know, yeah. you know, because every, you know, most of the other players, if they're a little dizzy, they can still get out there and do it. Quarterbacks got a lot to think about, a lot going on. Someone talking in their head. You know, you rock a guy in the head, and he's, you know, a quarterback. That's that's rough. But, but I mean, the thing how seemed to do fine. Right. Um, I, I'm glad our players just went up and and went after that guy and pushed him, and it didn't turn into a brawl. But it was nice that everyone got in there and just let that guy know. But yeah. he, once again. Four plays later, the guy tried to smear Jahan out of bounds. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Well, yeah. I did not know the Broncos were the number two cheaters. Well, yeah. what do you know? Yeah. I think one thing will be interesting about this game is substitutions. Um, it is mile high, and you know you got to get your wind. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be smart, and I think they probably have a plan for this. You know, when you can, when there's a timeout, when they're when they throw a deep incomplete pass, and they have to come back run your guys out, run them back. Don't we got caught one time getting Duran off the field. They caught us. So that was probably the sidelines fault because they probably called a certain thing and didn't get it in in time. So here comes Duran 322 pounds or whatever, trying to run off the field. And so that, yeah, and that they saw the sucked. Cardinals saw that and they did a hurry up. They wanted to catch him doing that. Oh, they did. And we should have they been did. prepared for that. As yeah, I watched so, it, they were, we should have been ready for that. I was railing on them for that. Like, come on. I think it was like less than two minutes left or two minutes and something left. You know, they're doing a hurry up. And I was just like, yeah, yeah that's another exact thing. Come on, coach. So, yep. That's what we were. Yeah. That's the kind of things we were talking about. They got to clean up uh, from, a, even from a coaching perspective, you just can't do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Just let the guys stay in, you know, just, just you have to change it up, but mm-hmm. I think we are going to have to rotate our guys. We got plenty good rotation yes. on the D line. We got good rotation with the DBs. We got some good backups. The wide receivers. We can get Diami in there. Um, so I I don't think I think it'd be interesting to see how we go on the bench if we just start working some guys in because uh, that that it really does. I lived in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, man. And you really do feel that altitude. Mm-hmm. You know, you start walking around. It, it gets to your chest a bit. So, yeah. well, then on offense, you know, they got the Russell Wilson, the, the gazillion dollar man. And to me, I read everywhere, almost everywhere, that uh, he looked uh, he like he looked pretty good. He looked better than last year. But I also found a couple key people 
that I watched, especially from a fantasy perspective, that said they didn't see much different at all. Mm-hmm. That that maybe he was better, but they don't. It's not. We're not talking about being better because he was not good. We're talking about they paid a gazillion dollars in draft picks for the old Russell Wilson, and what they got was the Russell Wilson the last two years in Seattle, mm-hmm. kind of flat-footed, only throws long, uh, keeps taking sacks, running back. I mean, to his credit, he only had two sacks, um, but but the same the stuff I saw, he just basically kind of looked like that same guy. He's not Russell Wilson. He just is not, he's not, he's and he's not ever going to be. So Mm -hmm. that's what we're going up against. I mean, not that he can't be dangerous and, and, and call a good game and, and command a good uh, offense, but um, he's not the same guy. And I, I didn't see it in the highlights. Um, We got some decent uh, running backs, uh, kind Mm -hmm. of a platoon, Javante Williams, but he's Mm -hmm. coming off knee surgery. Samaji Pirine. He's not bad, but, these guys aren't elite. Um, I, Jerry Judy, the good wide receiver, missed last week. He's questionable right now. It's a hamstring, right. and hamstrings are bad. I mean, I don't know. I, I I don't see too much. Adam Troutman's a tight end. Cortland Sutton's the other wide receiver. I'm not seeing a bunch of weapons on that offense that are scaring me. Their uh, tight end, Dulcet, is injured too. Yeah, they're they're yep. really down on their skill skill players they they hardly got any wide receivers so yep. uh yeah dulcich went out with a hammy dude that guy he's another one of them he's just hammy all the time you go back in his his injury report and it's hammy all day long so they really don't have any speed in their in mm-hmm. their skill players and their wide receivers now williams their running back is pretty good perine can be pretty good you give him a chance but uh, uh wilson last week i you know he he followed the game plan. You could tell he was he was hitting them short ones, but you could tell on a few of them plays he wants to throw long. He wants that, that's the thing about him. He wants to make the big play, and he can't. He doesn't want to follow the scheme. He wants to he wants to do the big play and look like the big shot in the big show. And the one problem with that with him, especially without the skill players that he needs, uh, like a Lockett or 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 the other guy that the Seahawks had is that he's got to wait for somebody to be open before he can throw the ball. That's his problem. And so he can't do just a time thing. One, two, three back launch it to where the guy is supposed to be. He cannot do that. He's got to wait and see if a guy's open. And so that's going to be his downfall. And so what we need for our defense to do is for our defense to cover super tight with verse one, 1,000 to 1,000, their front line is okay. They're not the greatest, but they're going up against our defensive line. And so we should be able to make hay with that. We should be yeah. able to put the squeeze on him, put the fear of God in him, chase him out of that pocket, or hopefully keep him in that pocket, secure the edges, make him throw from the pocket, which he cannot do. I mean, I know he likes that rainbow ball, but it's just not going to happen because he doesn't have the tools to do that with. So uh, I think we got a great chance on defense to shut them down. Yeah, I do too. Um, and it, it kind of kind of portends um, uh, maybe a close game. And you're yeah. on the road, and you've got these two defenses that can play really well. So that that'll be which once again comes down to penalties, turnovers, sideline calls, yeah. uh, how you're doing the game. So it, it this this game really important that they tighten that stuff up. Yeah. And I think also on the way our D line, if we can get the pressure with the four makes such a difference. And the big thing we know about Wilson um, over the middle is tough for him. I mean, I've seen the charts, I've seen the graphs. He just can't do it. He just doesn't do it. I don't know. Maybe he could, if he tried, but he doesn't. And so if we can get that push from Duran and Allen, which we know they can, if they can, either slice through or, or bull rush their guy back just a little. And then make sure that ends don't come all the way around, mm-hmm. you know, come around, come around, crown, but, but you know what I mean? Don't give yeah. him that side angle to come out because mm-hmm. if he gets pushed, he's not going to roll. He will sometimes roll backwards, which he does. It's really stupid because right. then he gets those 22 yard sacks, yep. but he'll try and come forward. So be aggressive coming around. But if you feel like the pockets pushing, those defense men need to put on their brakes and catch him trying to either run that way or finding a throwing zone that way. You know, but I really think if we put pressure up the middle on him and he's not as fast as he used to be. So even if they flush him out, he's just not that quick. 
And well, our, we need you know, a spy on him too. Yeah, we need someone you think watching him. Yeah, you think he run? I don't know. Does he even run that well anymore? He does. Supposedly last season he did a lot of workout and he he lost some weight and he trimmed up and he 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 did oh, yeah. some things in that area. So supposedly he's fairly agile like he used to be. But if we keep okay. a spy on him, I think we should do all right. I, I don't see a problem with that. But you can't let him squeak out because he can hurt you. He he yeah. does know how to run. I, I give him that much. But just making him feel uncomfortable in the pocket forcing him to do his reads, forcing him to do his check downs by virtue of keeping his uh, his uh, receivers in check. That'll just scramble his brain and, and he'll get frustrated. And uh, the other thing, too, is to try and shut them down. Like we want to frustrate him more is get ahead as soon as we can put them behind, forcing him to have to throw. I mean, like any other game, you know, just Get ahead a little bit as much as we can. And in this game, every point is going to count. Every, uh, Especially these close games, every point is going to count. Last week for them, killed them because their their kicker missed an extra point. And they lost 17-16. And, yeah. and he missed a field goal. And he missed a field goal. And that was a 55. I could almost let that go. Yeah. But uh, but the point after, that was it was the game changer. Look what happens yeah. when you miss one. You It's a difference between a tie and a loss or going into yep. overtime and possibly securing the win. So yep. every single point now to that fact too, our boy Cheeseman skimmed one off the ground. So luckily we got <laughs> chest way, you know, scooping the ball up and doing a good job of setting it up for our boy and uh, uh, Joey Sly to, to kick that field goal to give us the four points to make them have to score the touchdown. That was brilliant. So yeah, good yeah that was, that was real. And he, and, uh, and Tress uh, punted well. Yeah. Uh, and, and he did that. And yeah, yeah, he was just lights out. They came after him one time and he just bump, got it out of there so quick. Um, mm -hmm. And also, hey, speaking of special teams, yeah. um, Crowder uh, yeah. looked really good. I yeah. mean, he and, and it, he just, you know, I mean, he, I mean, he, we just want him to not do anything crazy. But one time he sort of caught it in traffic, but, you know, he wanted to, and he got yardage, and he looked confident, like he, he wasn't scared to catch he's that not ball. Scared? In nope. He's yeah. got that DeAndre Carter look to him. Yep. Where he's and gonna, so he, he's going to catch it, and he's going to run. I'm glad we got him. Yep. I'm really too. glad we got him. I, when they picked him up, I was like, hmm. But now I've seen him. I think it's really, I think it solidifies that we don't have to worry about it. Yep. You know. And you know what? He, we'll find out this game. He's probably oh, yeah. He's probably not a bad receiver. I mean, who knows, man? If we're resting guys, put him in the slot. He's probably had a little more time with the playbook. He's he's a dangerous guy as a slot receiver. Yeah. He knows it. Oh, heck yeah. He's been around. He's a veteran. He knows how to work, guys. So, um, all right. Well, I think, man, that's all I got to say. I'm, I'm happy for the victory, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this game. This will be a test on the road. It will be, especially, like you said, up there at Mile High Stadium, the Oxygen, them guys really, they are – they're chomping at the bit. They might do anything that it needs. They need to do to secure the win. We got to be careful of that. Uh, we can't let uh, start out early. All that kind of stuff. We already talked about that. So I'm really excited for the game, you guys. Uh, Sunday at 4:30, I'm going to be doing the live, the live reaction show. Like I said, I scream and I cry and I cuss and. And just like your buddy sitting on the couch. So uh, it's going to be a yeah. lot of fun, and we are looking forward to it. Anything yep. else, hopefully, That's it, man. Hopefully Chris, Veronica, Mountain Man, and everyone's there, and anyone else uh, listening to this yeah. uh, right here and now. Yeah, if you can't get the game, man, tune on in. You know, Scrubber's going to call it. He's going to let you know what's going on on the field mm -hmm. um, and everything. Believe me, Scrubber will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel his pain and oh, his yeah. joy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lots of fun. Well, It'll great fun. show, man. I Good job, man. Hey, yep. No problem, man. We'll uh, we'll just meet back again next Wednesday or Thursday for our Broncos follow up and getting ready for our next game all season long. That's how we're going to do it. Right on. Well, I'll see you in the chat room and I'll see everybody during the live reaction show. Thank you.